Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Apocalypse Soon. And now, your host, the man, the myth, the reality, Eddie Pepitone. I am reality. Hey, everybody. It is Eddie Pepitone, and welcome to Apocalypse Soon, the podcast with no upside. We are in the studio again. And it is uh, a beautiful day for a podcast, I'll tell you that. Um, me and Tinkin are here, but first, of course, as we always do, uh, we have a certain band leader who is the head of a band called Bobby and the Mephistophelians. Bobby! Boobity boop 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 Wow, good to see you, Pepitone. Good to see you, baby. We're in the studio again. It's nice. It's so nice to be in the studio. I got a new pair of leather pants. Finally, the weather's cooled down enough I can fit into these pants. Yeah, yeah. You, it looks like they're painted on, Bobby. Oh, yeah, God bless you. I appreciate that. It, you know, I like them Well, tight. I don't know if that's a compliment. Oh, I mean. Oh, it is. It is. All right. I go get them tight. Get them real tight. And mm -hmm. then I have one of my girls. She's got an air dryer. I put the, put the heat on. I put them on, and I gain a little weight, and I have it blow it out a little bit on the outside. You gain them. a little weight while you're in the pants? I put the pants on. Barely get them on. Barely. Barely. And then I go gain a couple of pounds to now make them even tighter. Yeah, that's interesting that you can gain a couple of pounds uh, that quickly. What do you do? What's your preferred weight? What's your preferred method of weight gain? Chocolate chip cookie dough. I get a oh, tube, and it's not, school. it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. Well, Just, yeah, for your heart. Your heart. Yeah. Now, your doctor said your heart. Uh, could give out at any moment, and he said that many years ago, right? Yeah, he, well, he goes. He sometimes will look at a like a, a scan of my heart and go, "Wait a second, is this a dead guy?" And I go, and then he, <laughs> and then he goes, yeah. "Wait, this is your." And so I should have been gone. Technically, you know, medically, I've been dead for several years. You have you, that's yeah. right. You are legally you're and this kind of works for income taxes and stuff. You're legally dead. Yes. And you don't have to file, I believe. Don't have to file, haven't registered my vehicle. You haven't had to register your vehicle, which I can't stand doing that, especially when you have to smog it. Oh, I hate I it. hate having to drive through San Francisco I hate having to drive through Los Angeles and like, you know, get it smogged, which yeah. means you know, put the smog in the... I don't know what smogging it means. They got to put the tube in the tailpipe and then they put it on the dyno and they're running the wheels uh, and the guy well, goes, give me 75 bucks. I have... Yes, exactly. And and I have a way to beat the smog test. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's uh, called the uh, anti... It's called the smog denier and it's made by Milton Bradley. Really? Yeah. The it's a game. Very so it was smog denier. Now, how do you how do you play the smog denier game? Then? Well, you just you attach it to your tailpipe. You know, kids. I think you have to be a kid, not really a kid, thirty five and up, can only uh, play play this game. I like to attach like a balloon to my tailpipe. Uh -huh. It makes like uh, farting sounds as I'm driving on the road. You ever do that? Oh, that's nice. I'm a silly guy. You know, I love my uh, horn. The kids love... must like, kids love oh, fart noises. Love you so know who doesn't like fart noises as much are like just ser overly serious people. Like Stick in the muds. Sticks in the muds. Yeah, yeah. like like businessmen. Yeah, the the wet blankets of society yeah. out there. I always thought that oil companies who were destroying the planet, you know, and, you know, putting out all this misinformation about how, you know, the greenwashing, they're not really doing any kind of green thing. They're fucking, they're killing us, you know. They're fracking and they're fracking through uh, beautiful parts of the country they're just they're ruining water levels they do not like fart noises no. and i always thought they could benefit from like you know guys we are uh, uh we're gonna talk about our quarterly profits i used to get hired to go into boardrooms for a little levity 
You know, especially you used if, to get high. Yeah, you know, I'd get hired. I would well, oh, get hired. I'd get high too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I heard about you that you love to get high uh, during board meetings. I love getting high and going into a high pressure big business board meeting. Right. And I let off a few toots. Because what happens is they'll go with the numbers, oh the waning, everything's bad, and people, you know, you mm-hmm. see people jumping off buildings. And then I would be in there and I'd let a couple of them rip, you know, you know, and then the people go, Ah, hey, you know, maybe it's not so bad. You know, Maybe it's not look, so bad. My vacation home's gone, but these toots. <laughs> my vacation's gone. Al threw himself off the roof, but <laughs> makes me feel better. I got you. Yeah, you know, I'm a, you got to use the gifts that God's given you. That's right. You know? Well, Bobby, it's great to have you here. Great uh, to be had. Yep. And now let's bring in our producer, Kevin. Hey. Taken. What's up? How you doing, buddy? Doing great. It's nice to be back, you know, feeling sure good, is. feeling footloose and fancy free. It sure is. How are you doing? I'm a little tired. Yeah. Um, but uh, I just had a, a Krispy Kreme donut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I got, I got one of those earlier. I, yeah. I, I told, I, There's I, some Krispy Kremes here in the studio. I didn't want to eat it in front of you because I didn't want to pressure you or like inspire you in any way. So I ate yeah. it in the back. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know what's funny about though about anything uh, like sugar is so addictive. I think sugar is the most addictive, absolutely thing in the world. Um, maybe, maybe next to uh, this. Uh, woman named Candace. But anyway, it is it is it is a highly addictive uh substance, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. And you see the donuts on a table and you're like, here's my thought process. I see donuts on the table and I think, well my doctor has told me <laughs> you can't. You can't. You can't do it. Your blood sugar, you have to watch it. Yeah. And then my next thought is, I have nothing to live for anyway. That's right. Now, what's the point? Now, of you have children. Eh, you know. I don't have children. Eh. Uh, so I'm like, why do I, you know, like, do, I mean, you know, I do, I don't have children, but I have Patreon members. It's, well, like, that's what I was going <sighs> to say. They're my children. They are your By children. By the way, become a Patreon member. Mm-hmm. Patreon, patreon.com slash Eddie Pepitone. Mm-hmm. You you keep me alive, literally, with your donations, bread and circuses, and also check out eddiepepitone.com. dot com. Um, I'll be touring uh, all over, so check that mm-hmm, out too. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, so you see these these donuts, and they. What I hear in my head is like, "Hey, pal, come on." Life is is brutal. Why not cushion it a little with this extremely sugary taste? I agree 100%. You ever have a donut talk to you? Like, sometimes the talk gets weird. Like, uh, sometimes a donut will start off, like, nice and then veer into something strange. Like, sometimes the donut's like, come on, pal. You, you know you want me. Come on. Come on, take me. But before you take me, I want you to leave. I want you to leave six $20 bills unmarked on your dresser, all right? On your dresser. And I want you to leave me a handgun. You ever have a donut who, like, (laughs) talks to you in that weird way, like a hostage situation? Yeah, I've had a a donut with a handgun before. Just going, eat me. Eat me, you fuck. Imagine that, like, if, if donuts, you know became that unpopular because of diabetes that they had to start holding guns i yeah to people's <laughs> that would be a good cartoon by the way an animated thing are are like violent don- like donuts that force you that force people who want to stay away from them yeah I could see that you doing that, like having mm-hmm. a situation where you're literally walking past a box of donuts. And then hey, one motherfucker! Of the... Yeah, yeah. And that's what donut would. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right, motherfucker. I gotta get in the bakery. Come here. Don't you pass this window? I'll blow your motherfucking brains out. Like the donut who is like um, just. Uh, uh, Al Capone. Or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know what, you know, Scarface. Scarface the donut. That would be good. Would be. 
Say hello to my little friend. Yeah. My, my little glazed friend. Say hello to my little cronut. <laughs> what do they call those little ones? The, uh, the cronuts? I, are I, they cronuts? Well, the cronuts are the ones that are croissant donuts. Oh. And those are insane. The donut holes, though. That donut hole. Say hello to my little friend, a donut <laughs> hole. Eh? She's going to like it. Hello. And the donut hole's like, hey, you fuck. <laughs> they, they're also, like, they're nasty. A little switchblade. Yeah, he's got a little switchblade. Adorable. Hey, yeah. F- By the way, this is an idea I'm thinking, and let me know. Email what? How, where can people email us? Eddie Pep Podcast at Gmail dot com. Eddie Pep Podcast at Gmail dot com. Email us if you think this is a good idea. That you know, it's like donuts who force themselves on people violently, mm-hmm. and like the little donut holes would be like, "Hey, motherfucker." <laughs> Yeah, I'm small. You can eat me. Your blood sugar won't spike that much unless you have ten of me. Right, guys? That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> and all the other lost, donut man. holes. Kick his ass. <laughs> you think that's a good idea for an animated uh, show on Adult Swim, everybody? Like, Adult Swim, the shows are short, right? What are they, 12 minutes, 15 minutes? I know they do the, the short ones, yeah. I think they're about 15, 12, 12, yeah. 15. Sounds right. Yeah. By the way, they're doing, uh, so it's probably like, honestly, 11 minutes because right. 22 minutes for a standard half That's hour. So, and, yeah. 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 So it's probably like an 11 minute show and it would be, it would start with donuts going, look, the fucking reports are out about blood sugar. Anyway, let's not beat that. <laughs> it's starting like to it. sound not funny to me right now. Uh, so what's been going on, brother? What's, what's, uh, what's, uh, your stand-up career looking like you're on other podcasts which oh. i think i have said before i'm not a big uh fan of well we, i i try to now i'm gonna hold, i'm gonna hide them from you i've, I've been doing them in mm. secret you know that i i, I try to underground not, pod yeah pod, a lot of podcasts are done in secret by the way yes. wouldn't it be funny if the cia had a podcast that just dealt with classified information, oh. but you had to have a certain password to hear it, and it would be something like this. Uh, hi, everybody. This is Ted Stevens, head of the CIA. Today, we want to talk about Americans who were on a kill list. We will have to kill them. Uh, we will be giving their names, but first, I want to thank our sponsor, Vi- Viagra. Uh, Viagra will get your uh, soldier as hard as it can, and it'll it'll please uh, your significant other. Uh, Viagra, that comes in all kinds of flavors. And uh, all right, well, the first person who is going to get killed is Mike Elston. Mike has been trying to... uh, Mike has been trying to get the military to put down their weapons and have peace around the world, so he must be killed, and he will be killed by CIA agent Frank Louise. Frank Louise. It will be hidden as a suicide, and as a reminder to the agents, make sure not to shoot the dog again for these suicide <laughs> cover-ups. Now, wouldn't that be a great pilot, but it would be a hard one to get. Like, you yes. would have to be, it would be encrypted. I would love, I mean, that would be amazing if there was somebody on the inside, a weekly podcast, you know. No, and, and he gets the podcast for a year before they find out. Yeah, yeah. And he's upset because nobody's listening. <laughs> he's going, what the hell? I'm releasing government secrets right. and we can't get any listeners. Right. What's happening? Right. Oh, I would. That would be amazing. It would be a nice thing to have some sort of inside the government secrets podcast. Inside the government, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, but and and they're releasing the most sensitive material. Yeah, like yeah. our troops are now massing um, on the border of um, El Salvador, and we will be going in uh, tonight, approximately midnight. <laughs> Every bit of information. Yeah, yeah. And the to, idea is to kill as many people as we can indiscriminately to set off an internal civil war <laughs> in El Salvador. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then he's, to celebrate our 100th episode, uh, we've got that, video of the Clintons shooting a child in the face. 
Yeah, like, <laughs> just like yeah, there would be special their yeah. their thing instead of bread and circuses. Uh, their tiers would be you know top secret. <laughs> yeah, uh, classified. We uh, and the biggest one would be we'd have to kill you if you knew this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tier. Well, and eventually everybody who listens to the podcast has to be killed. Ha, that, that's that, another that downside. Yeah. That, now remember, there is no upside yes. uh, to apocalypse soon. <laughs> um, so you're doing okay. I'm doing pretty good. You know, it's uh, always a decision to look on the bright side. You know, and I, yeah. I look in the faces yeah. of my disappointed children, and I go, "Gosh, they're cute." You know, I, I like them. They're, yeah. They're, yeah, yeah. But this morning, I was telling you this morning, trying to get my daughter to wake up. And it's like you know she's. What like, time are we talking about? So they we have to leave at eight o'clock. So mm. I you know I'm waking her up. It's like seven forty five. They're usually up earlier than that, but I was sleeping. So uh, then uh, I wake up and she's just like, ah, and I'm like, baby, maybe brush your hair. It's pretty. And what time just, did you have to leave? Eight o'clock. So we, and you got them up at seven forty five. Well, they they're usually already. What kind of up. breakfast do these kids? Ah, uh, we don't do breakfast. No, I I just I throw some raw. I heard meat that's at them. the most important meal of the day. It is. It is. No, we do uh, here here kids. Here's a piece <laughs> of jerky. You know what's amazing is goose they, jerky. <laughs> goose jerky. They serve them uh, breakfast at school, which is awesome. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they get uh, coffee cake and all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, my daughter was flipping out just for asking her to brush her hair. She was, I'm like, but sure. She's like, I don't want to. I'm like, geez, like, settle ooh, it down. Like, she, gets, she woke up on uh, the proverbial wrong side of the bed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wasn't having it. By the way, what the fuck is the wrong side of the bed? I, I never understood that because to me, both sides of the bed uh, seem fine yeah. to me. Like, there isn't one side where when I put my feet down, it's into a pit of snakes. <laughs> What, what is your uh, take on the well, wrong side of the bed? Any side of the bed that I've been sleeping on for a couple of months gets a dip, a nice little hole in it. I don't know if you have, have to oh, deal with that. Any side of the bed you've been sleeping on? It, yes. Oh, I, I yeah. Will, I will often. Yeah, my side of the bed is, um, it, it's sort of like, it looks like an archaeological dig. <laughs> yeah. At this point where they're trying to find King Tut's tomb. Yeah. And no luck. And you're just, you're in this bathtub of yeah. a bed. Yeah. I, I hate because I sleep on my side. And so then I'll be Same all. Same here. I'll be I all, roll from side to side. Yeah. Yeah. And my back will crack as I roll because I'm, I'm just. You ever roll and pull a muscle? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm at the age now where when I roll, when I roll over, um, I strain my calf yeah. and leg sometimes. And it's very <laughs> scary. Like, I'll get a cramp. I think I have to hydrate a lot more than that, which is why, if anyone's watching this, I have a huge bottle of water oh, today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to stay hydrated. You have to stay hydrated, well, especially you when you're eating as many donuts. You do donuts take away your moisture. <laughs> I don't know true. why that is. With moisture stealing donuts. Mm -hmm. Well, and you often work out in your sleep too. Uh, I, so well, you got to stretch. You know, it depends on what you call working out. <laughs> I mean, I I I battle my demons when I'm a, when I'm asleep, mm -hmm. and my demons are always dressed in a onesie. I think I've mentioned that before. <laughs> You have a grapple. You know, they call it grappling. Wrestling also a synonym for wrestling is grappling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I grapple. Oh, I, oh I've, been, I've grappled before. Have you? Oh, I've grappled. Yeah? yeah Were yeah. you a high school wrestler? Or no, no, no. Just with addiction, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Yes, yes. Grappling with addiction. Uh, I think that's one of your podcasts, isn't it? Yes. Welcome to Grappling with Addiction. <laughs> I am about to snort something good. It's, they, just, they, it's people who completely have given, like, they really don't grapple that much with it. They yeah. just do it. Yeah. Well, go <laughs> I don't know why they're talking like newsmen. Welcome to Grappling with Addiction. <laughs> I am addicted to everything because our world is ending. Pakistan is underwater. The United States keeps funneling more and more money into war like the Ukraine. They, they want a proxy war. They have proxy wars in Yemen, so we have decided to snort coke today. Like that would be that. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring on like a somebody who's been sober for you know a decade, and then I'll just put the substance they love right in front of them. They're like, so what do you think? You know, 
pretty hard. I hear it's good. It's good stuff. And then I'll have a an active, you know, a bong over on the side. An and, active bong. <laughs> that's just, mm. well, that's the kind of bongs I get. You know, I like a real active bong. Do you st- do you have a bong? I don't have a bong. No, okay. You don't. I did. I have, used to have a bong. Yeah, yeah. And then it got it got repossessed. Do you ever have your bong repossessed? Like you're making payments on it? Yeah, yeah. You said like you had a good one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I had a top of the line bong. It was. Um, well, it was a hybrid. It was electric part, electric part mm. gasoline. <laughs> yeah, it was it was put out by Audi. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. I bought one because uh, I didn't start smoking until later in life. I was <laughs> into my thirties. I, I started. First started. At, well, I, well, I you know I I don't do it right now, but I was smoking um, from fourteen years old, wow. which was way too young. You'd be really a cool kid though. Oh, I was so cool. <laughs> No, when you're 14, you're never cool. Even yeah. if you're stoned, you're just yeah. like, oh man. Your body, your one arm's longer than the other. You know, you're <laughs> yeah, gangly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, cause my son's 14 right now, and man, he is gangly. He's got these huge feet, and he's just so skinny and like. Now, it do just you know it's your son? Like you know, you're the father. A hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, he looks. Right. He looks too much like me. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't know if if my well, wife could is be the mother. Plastic surgeon. <laughs> I don't know if my wife's the mother. <laughs> Uh-huh. I saw it come out, but I... You know, yeah, yeah. It, it ah, different. okay. Were you there for the birth? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched the you whole thing. You were in the room? I was I was staring down the barrel. Of, did you... um? So you did you film it and put it up online? I filmed... Instagram. The Instagram <laughs> reels. You here's, can monetize. Here's my wife's crotch. <laughs> only, no, wow, only 30 come on. Seconds. You don't have to call it like that. I mean, it's... Um, it's giving birth it's it's, beautiful. The, it's life yeah no you know? i did so i did not film it coming out but i filmed her for part of it and stuff and then when it started getting intense i put the camera down but uh, only for my <laughs> son's birth <laughs> i didn't do it for my daughter's birth we uh which i've i haven't heard the end of so <laughs> really yeah I, cause I even edited, like I put together like a video and stuff of like mm. a l- little montage. I edited it, you know? Mm. Um, but yeah, the nurse was like, <laughs> with, 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 I just see music underneath. Like a summer wind came rolling in <laughs> from across the bay. <laughs> All right, honey. Now push, push. <laughs> ah, just screaming. Uh. Yeah, no, I had to uh, carry on a, a wayward soul. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm, uh, mm. Well, um, that's great that you took part, mm-hmm. and um, I'm chewing on almonds here. It was it was gnarly because I was there, and the doctor. Yeah, I mean it was it was intense. It was it was very intense. What were you going to say, the doctor and you? Well, stopped. I stopped because I didn't want to get too graphic. Oh, okay. um, covered in blood or no? I mean, so they have to do the episiotomy, which is you know where they cut the umbilical cord. <laughs> no, no, no. They have to open the the you know the exit for the child. The uh, vagina. The vagina. You yeah, mean I, was it cesarean? No, no, no. But the, typically, when you have a child, mm-hmm. uh, it's not enough space this oh, is why course. i'm like of being, course. Of course. so they have to cut mm. ah. and uh i remember as i know i was a big child i i left the womb at 180 pounds really i was 180 and i was smoking a cigar i was already <laughs> a a full-blown adult dude i'm telling you sounded like a cool kid no man. my mother smoking a cigar at my birth. mother was 35 years late Oh. With me. <laughs> and they were worried because usually if you're a month late, people get worried, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but th- th- my mom was 35 years late with wow. me. Just... And the doctor kept, you know, they kept ultra, they kept like looking in her womb and they saw me picking up habits and. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of bad habits. Yeah, they yeah, saw yeah. me like placing bats Mm -hmm. they saw me in night school you know i was trying to better myself at some point in the womb because you know i you get bored and i started taking uh you know how to weld (laughs) when i was in the womb trade school that's good i was in trade school in the womb that's really but i finally gave birth uh year 35 i came out 180 Wow. No, because I wasn't able to get that much exercise. The only thing you can really do is partial sit-ups. Yeah, yeah. And then moms hate that. 
They, yeah. they hate it. When you're moving around yeah. and you're like, look, I'm a grown man. He's My mom absolutely, absolutely hated carrying me for 35 years. That was yeah. a strain. And as I grew, you know, uh, <laughs> she grew, mm-hmm. you know, and people would be like, Jesus Christ, what? Barbara, what is going on? Is how all, how big is your child at this point? And she would correct him and say, first of all, he's not a child anymore. <laughs> he's in welding school. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's <laughs> already got arrested for stealing cars. Don't ask me how this takes place in the womb. Yeah, and I just see her up in the stirrups, and you're just coming out with a little uh, acetylene welding torch. and Coming out with a acetylene welding torch. <laughs> And a racetrack form at Santa Anita. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I come out of the womb and with the cigar racetrack form, and I'm like, hurry, I want $300 on Lucky Stripe in the third today. <laughs> Your mom just got her <laughs> leg the up doctor. on the counter. Uh, that's great. That's great. My dad uh, filmed it of me coming out, placing a bet on Lucky. And I just, I ran out of the, like I was able since I was a full Full grown adult. I ran out of the room, got into a car, and I placed the bet myself. I was covered in blood and mucus yeah, yeah, yeah. and all the stuff you're covered in when you come out. And they always it, give you a lot of shit when you're covered in blood. They always give you a they hard time. Do give you, especially when I was driving there to Santa Anita. I'm in the, um, you know, I'm in the world not more than a minute and a half, and I got pulled over by the <laughs> cops because I was covered in blood and. Horrible. I had the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck. Yeah, yeah. And we'll get dark, you know, out there, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a great show. <laughs> this is the, look, you're listening to these crazy things right now. The, you know, uh, that was uh, the guy in the womb who comes out fully formed. And mm-hmm. uh, look, it's apocalypse soon. During the apocalypse, which we're in now, we are already in it. We're in, and I've mentioned this before, we're in uh, the sixth mass extinction in the history of our planet. It's called the Anthropocene, which means it's uh, the human extinction. And, you know, that, those are the kind of bits you're going to get yeah. uh, during this dark time. You know, if you want a playfully light podcast, then go fuck your, go fuck yourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, a lot of guys want to just want to hear a slide whistle for an hour, you know, and a slide whistle, just a bunch of bullshit for an hour, mm-hmm. you know. And we don't do that. We, we won't do that. that. We give you the truth. We give you the truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so we got a great show for you coming up. Um, so please, folks, stick around. And now. Driving in the rain with Eddie Pepitone. Oh boy, I woke up late and I had a fare already, so I came tumbling down the stairs. And when I say tumbling, I mean I was actually tumbling like a Karamazov brother. I had taken tumbling at the University of Nebraska a long time time ago. I was a tumbler, not a tumbler, which is a raconteur in Yiddish theater, but a tumbler. And I tumbled into my Uber slash Lyft slash Instacart slash Bloodmobile slash Bookmobile slash COVID vaccination mobile slash therapy mobile slash electroshock therapy mobile slash Instacart slash DoorDash mobile slash wrists and I got in the car and I turned I turned her on and just as I turned on my sweet little Betsy slash Instacart slap. Well, you know, I just went through that. The rain started coming down. And it was pouring. It was pouring the way coffee would pour at a wedding. It was pouring the way booze would pour at a, at a fraternity house. It was pouring. 
pouring the way tears would pour out of the eyes of someone who just witnessed their entire village being destroyed by a hurricane. It was pouring. I could do metaphors for hours, but let's just say that rain was coming down harder than a piece of steel. That rain was coming down harder than an erection on a man who was on antidepressants. That rain was coming down harder than a man with no chin. That rain was coming down harder than granite than lead. <sighs> My windshield wipers tried to push the rain aside, but it was like trying to push aside the fat lady at the circus. It was like trying to push aside a stubborn child who didn't want to get out of the way. The, the wipers couldn't push the rain away, so I, I swerved to and fro, and luckily I wound up at the fair's address. And what I saw next knocked me for a loop. She was absolutely jester hat for some reason. A beautiful jester hat that had on the little bells that came down it. It was red. The jester hat was made of velvet and the rain was pelting the jester hat the way children would pelt other children with spitballs. The rain was pelting that jester hat the way people Pelt with cell pelts <laughs> on borders in the Canadian prairie selling pelts. Anyway, you don't need more metaphors about pelts. The rain was just pelting her jest hat. And underneath her jest hat, you could see long, flowing brown hair that had streaks streaks of pink in it and I loved when women streaked their hair with pink colors and she had on a tight 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 green skirt matter of fact when she got in my instacart slash door dash slash blood mobile you know all those things she said I said to her how come the skirt's so tight she said, because I saw your picture in the newspaper. And I said, when was I in the newspaper? She said, you were wanted in three states. And I said, for what? And she said, for being good looking. And I started the car again and we started driving down the street. The fair was going, she was going to a peace march. So she was actually getting driven to a march. I said, <clears throat> is that why you're wearing the jester hat? Because you want to look like one of those colorful demonstrators? And she said, yeah. And that was the extent of the conversation. She just stayed silent. She smoked cigarette after cigarette. I would look at her through the rear view mirror. The rain started coming down heavy and we finally made it to the peace march there was only one other marcher there because of the rain the rain had kept all the peace nicks away Whew. I was like well it looks like you only got one other marcher she said yeah that's Rocco and I said you in love with Rocco and she said me and Rocco have an understanding and I knew what she meant and just then the rain came down even harder it was hammering my windshield the way roofers would hammer a roof especially when they wanted to finish the job by three o'clock and it was 245 and they wanted to hammer that roof and they needed to hammer those shingles in they only had 15 more minutes that's how hard this rain was coming down 
This rain was coming down. It was hammering down the way a carpenter on meth was building a house. A carpenter on meth just hammering in the two by fours and the cross beams like an animal because he's on methamphetamine. And she slowly got out of the car and I said, well, if it doesn't work out with Rocco, please look me up. And she said, don't worry. I cut your picture out of the paper. And I said, thank you. Thanks for joining us for another Driving in the Rain with Eddie Pepitone. the last newscaster on earth i am the last newscaster and perhaps the last man on the planet i have not seen any other people on the planet so here is the news our top story tonight I am absolutely barren and left alone to talk to myself in the mirror. I am trying to give myself a pep talk, but it's very hard. Let's go to a clip of me talking to myself in the mirror earlier today. Hello! You are alone on this planet! You have to give the newscast later, so keep it together. I am fucking insane. First name fucking. Last name insane. I can see your image in this mirror, sir. Who are you? What do you want? And that was a clip from me earlier today. In other news, I am at the verge of suicide because you need connection in this world. And because of the apocalypse, because of the nuclear winter, there is nobody, absolutely nobody here to touch. There's nobody here to talk to. I cannot even eat. I am withering away. Luckily, I was fat or I would have been dead long ago. Now let's go to me for sports. Light schedule again. Nothing. Nothing is going on. As I told you, I am the last person on the planet. If you, if masturbating is a sport, then I won again. I won again. I won again at masturbation today. Now let's go to me for weather. The weather today is unbreathable again. The nuclear winter has settled in. So, if I am planning to go out, I'm insane. That's my last name. I'm fucking insane. First name fucking. Last name insane. So I'm not going out. I am here in this bunker where I broadcast the news to no one. Things are looking very bleak. In other news, I plan on masturbating again later today in sports. Thanks for joining us for the last newscaster. And now welcome to another episode of... What is a squirrel thinking? Mm. Wow. These nuts are shitty. Where the fuck did this guy get these nuts? What else am I gonna eat, though? Mm. Mm, I don't know 
what the fuck do you? Well, the fucking guy how to find some shitty nuts. I, I bet these fucking nuts were nuts that went bad. I'm getting poisoned here. God damn it, I hate nuts like this. Well, oh, here comes Frankie. Frankie, you want a nut? Yeah, thanks. Here you go. Oh, God. I don't like these nuts. Frankie, blow me. Not for this nut. You want another one? Okay. Then blow me. Thank you. Hey, Frank. Yeah? You want to go, um, just watch, watch shit with me? Okay. Where are we going to go? I don't know, right here. Oh, okay. Look at that, huh? Yeah. What, um, you think that family's happy? No. None of these people are happy. Living in fucking Southern California, there's a drought, it never rains. It's always 100 fucking degrees here in the valley. How can they be happy? Would you mind giving me a hand job? Thank you. Oh, look at this. Look at this guy throwing a ball to his dog. Hey, fucking idiot! The dog is just doing that so you feed him later. I don't know, man. I don't know about these dogs. They get so excited about chasing a goddamn ball. Frank? Hey, where the fuck did you go? Where's Frank? My name's Arnie. Hey, oh, hey, Arnie. You new here? Yeah, I'm not part of your family here. I'm a squirrel from another tree. Well, then get the fuck out of here. It's only family here. All right, I'll let you stay, but you got to do something for me. And thanks for joining us for another episode of What's a Squirrel Thinking? Hey, everybody. That was our show. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm silly. Silly, dark... Um, we are all going to die, as you know. Um, our, our ecosystem is shot, and um, we're in the sixth mass extinction. I think I mentioned that. And uh, Kev, did you have a good time? I had a great time for being in the sixth mass extinction of the human race, and yeah, you know the the sadness of, of the world. I I'm doing great. Yeah, I, I've, it's a nice it's nice to exist in a space where mm -hmm. not only can we acknowledge the, the failure of the world, mm -hmm. but we can also hear a squirrel getting jacked off. You know <laughs> Absolutely. what I mean? And our world that we live in, not only the podcast world, but our world in general, yes, you know, uh, there are 100 species a day going extinct, but gelato keeps getting better and better. Like, mm. it's, it's the flavors are better and better. So, so good. You know, the technology, it's getting better in, in the making of gelato. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there's a lot of pain. You know, people dying in all kinds of natural disasters, random violence here in this country. But the gelato is absolutely mm. to die for. Uh, and, and we will. <laughs> and we will. We're in the six months. So, everybody, write a review. Yes, write a review on iTunes. Send us emails to eddiepeppod at gmail.com and uh, become a member of the Patreon if you want to see some more Eddie doing stand up. Mm -hmm. And then you get these videos of this, uh, this episode uh, the day that it comes out. And of course, we always put the episodes on video on our YouTube channel, which we'd sure appreciate a subscription to. And then uh, share it with, uh, you know, the elderly or, you know, share it with a friend, you know, or. Uh, <laughs> Rinse some airtime and throw this pot out there. You know, we appreciate it. Absolutely. Go to eddiepepitone.com um, for all my tour dates and um, become a Patreon member. Please. 
All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed it. And we will see you next time on Apocalypse Zone, the podcast with no upside.